All praise is glory and honor to the God of our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahuwah, the Elohim, and our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, whom the world knows as Jesus Christ. I greet every last one of you in the ancient African Hebrew, for peace be unto you, Shalom Aleichem. I am the minister of wellness, Nathaniel Jordan, the founder of the only Bible-based healing ministry in the world that teaches two distinct things. Number one, it is a sin for us to eat things that are harmful to our body. We must eat and drink to the glory of God. And then number two, um, once we come into the knowledge of the truth that there is absolutely no need for meat and dairy for the human body, we do not believe in the murder of animals. And we believe uh, and teach that our Lord Savior Jesus Christ, uh, he lived according to the Nazarene way, the way of the Essenes. Uh, brothers and sisters, it is our Sabbath day healing Bible study fellowship, and it is day 13 in our fruit fasting journey together. I welcome you all uh, to the broadcast. Of course, family, I'll be keeping, uh, keeping a close eye uh, because on the, uh, the quality. Uh, do not panic if the quality, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, goes out and does not hold up, uh, then don't panic. If you see me freeze or blank out, uh, no worries. I will come back, uh, brothers and sisters. And, um, and um, you know, if I have to, I just have to use my cell phone. So please never panic, never fear. Uh, I am in the motherland doing missionary work, important missionary work. And so sometimes, brothers and sisters, uh, the Wi-Fi simply uh, does not work as good as it does in the States. So do not, again, if I blank out, freeze out, you should already know um, I will be back and we will have our service. It is no big deal. Like, share, like, share, like, and share, whether you're watching this now or after the fact. Three things that you'll expect that you are expected to do, especially on our Sabbath day Bible readings. One is to hit the like button because that helps the video and the algorithm. Number two is to share this video with family, friends, and loved ones who need healing, especially those who claim to be believers, uh, those who are uh, battling sickness and um, uh, and disease, and they are believers, or they believe in Jesus Christ, or Yahshua, Yeshaya, whatever name, uh, brothers and sisters of our Lord and Savior, share this video, share this ministry. And then number three, um, if you are being blessed by the word, if you're being blessed by the gift that God has given me, uh, then I fully expect and the Lord fully expects that you will be a financial blessing to this ministry. And if you're not able uh, to do those things for whatever reason, uh, brothers and sisters, um, then uh, so be it. Uh, and some people don't do any of them. Uh, any other the three things. And then we have a small contingent of people who simply watch the videos uh, just for the purpose of hate or uh, trying to keep tabs on me and all of this other wickedness. Um, that's just the unfortunate uh, reality when people can come and watch you hiding in secret, hiding in the shadows. So we rebuke those negative forces in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. And so we will uh, press on forward. Brother Brian Hyman, uh, thank you already for uh, pouring in with you all support um, cash app offering sister Samantha. Uh, thank you, my sister, for your uh, cash app offering and sister Juliana sent the cash app offering earlier this morning. Brother Rolla Mitchell and Mama Jones. Uh, those are the offerings that we have received thus far. And I greet all of you all pouring in our regulars pouring in in the chat. Welcome to you uh, all. I love you all. I'm going to go ahead and say a word of prayer and let's get right to the word, brothers and sisters. Let's not delay the time um, because yesterday for day 12, I spent the time addressing comments and concerns that you all had um, about being persecuted by family. We spent considerable Bull amount of time discussing that yesterday. If you're new to this, to fruit fasting, if you're new and you're just learning about the fruit fast and you would like to get started, uh, then I encourage you, you must go back to the very first uh, video that I've done on fruit fasting. The very first, you can find all of the videos that I've done up until this point are archived in their own playlist. 
usually uh, Brother Courtney and Brother Will post that link in the chat, uh, but you can find it. Just simply go under uh, playlist. If you go under playlist on the Minister of Wellness YouTube channel, you can quickly and easily find all of uh, the past videos. And I'll show you that real quick. Uh, we're in Psalms chapter 63. Psalms chapter 63 is where we're starting with our Bible reading today. Psalms chapter 63. Uh, so let me, let me just show you real quick for those who may be new. If you are new, uh, brothers and sisters, uh, we have uh, Brother Courtney has put the link in. That's the playlist, so you can go back to day one because the first two days is when I go oh, in great detail. I go over um, what fruit fasting is, the Ten Commandments of fruit fasting. I do that in great detail on the first two days, okay? And then if you go to my YouTube channel, the main page of the YouTube channel right here at the Minister of Wellness, if you look right on the main page, you see playlist and you click on playlist and that's where you find all the videos I've done in different in different playlists. Okay, so it's very easy to find. That's essential, brothers and sisters. This is day 13. A lot of healing is taking place. Uh, I am excited for you all. Of course, uh, it's crunch time as we uh, now head into the last two weeks. It's called Once and For All. Let's soar our health in 24. And I was encouraged to do this this month because this is the start of the real new year. Uh, brothers and sisters, 30 days in April, 720 hours. I put on a suit uh, at the end of March, realized I was almost there. And I said, you know what? It's time once and for all to get the job done. And I'll be putting that suit on at the end of the month so you all can see that the Minister of Wellness is walking the walk and not just talking the talk. OK, so and uh, we've had incredible testimonials so far and we want to continue to finish strong. We are doing this fruit fasting journey. We eat to live because we want to be better servants for the Lord. That's why we read the Bible, because we are believers. We're trying to please our Lord and Savior. We want to hear God say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's why we're doing this. That's why we want to be healthy. We want to be healthy for the Lord. We want to be fit for the Lord. We want to be the best soldiers that we can be in the army of the Lord. That's why we're doing this fruit fasting journey. We understand this is a spiritual battle, that this is spiritual. Health is spiritual. And if we want to be healthy in the era of big pharma that was prophesied thousands of years ago in the Bible, I don't know how all of these churches and religious leaders overlook Revelations 18.23. I don't know how they overlook it, but in the era of big pharma, in this era that we're living in, if you are a spiritual leader and you are not directing the people under your care, if you are not directing them towards eating to live and strengthening their immune system, you are doing a disservice to the people who are listening to you. OK, so let's say a word of prayer, brothers and sisters, and let's go ahead. And without further ado, let us get into the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms, chapter 63, King James Version. Let's dive and let's let the word of God uh, give us the motivation and the inspiration and the conviction that we need to stay on the righteous course so that we can fulfill the health promises of scripture uh, that God promised to those who trust in him and serve him with their whole heart. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I ask you to forgive us of any sins we thought, said, or done, or did not do that is unpleasing to you that would hinder our prayers to have a blessed fellowship, bless the reading, hearing, and studying of your holy and precious word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, and I pray that this word will convict us all from me on down, uh, Heavenly Father, uh, to, to, to stay committed to giving up all forms of idolatry, to defeating all negative addictions so that we can show the world 
what it means to live life more abundantly in Jesus Christ. In Yahshua HaMashiach's name, I humbly pray this prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. Psalms chapter 63. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. We want to rise early, brothers and sisters. Very important. The earlier you get up, the better. The world understands these things. But we've been taught this slave theology, brothers and sisters, um, that, you know, that just tries to shame us from achieving great things in life or uh, this slave theology that tries to teach us that uh, it doesn't matter how much of a pathetic life you live now. It's all about just waiting until you die and go to heaven. Well, if that's the case, then you might as well just get it over with and jump off of a cliff. No, Jesus came to give us life more abundantly. And the Bible is very clear that we're supposed to take our lives seriously. So a serious person, a person that has a ser that has serious goals in life and it is trying to achieve greatly will wake up early. The average millionaire wakes up at four o'clock every morning. The average billionaire wakes up at three o'clock in the morning. So the Bible says, oh, God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. Why? My soul thirsted for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. This is symbolic, brothers and sisters, of a spiritual famine where the word of God is the word of God is scarce. The word of God, brothers and sisters, is very scarce. We're living uh, in a land uh, where there's so much immorality, where there's so much sin, where there's so much confusion. It, uh, the word of God has been dried up. Morals have been dried up. That is a spat that we're in, in living in spiritual darkness. And so we have to wake up early. If you don't want to live in spiritual darkness, if you want to uh, come from out of the desert of spiritual darkness, darkness when it comes to health and healing and wellness in the history of our people, then you have to wake up early and seek the Lord. Because the earlier you wake up, the more you have time to dive into the word, the more you have time to study, the more that you have time to sit still in the presence of the Lord so he can speak to you. Again, the average millionaire wakes up at 4 a.m. every morning. The average billionaire wakes up three o'clock in the morning. And all the great prophets, all the great spiritual giants have all been early risers. It's when the world is asleep, brothers and sisters, when the world is sleeping, that's the perfect opportunity to get connected to the most high. So make sure you are committed to do that. Uh, and because and, and if you're not able to get up very early, then just make sure the reason why is and because you're sitting on your phone all night because you plan on these stupid phones, plan on the apps, doing and watching things that has nothing to do with your spiritual development. Remember, one of the keys, the eighth commandment of fruit fasting is to avoid all frivolous entertainment. What are you watching? What are you listening to? Is it going to help you serve the Lord better than why are you watching it and listening to it? OK, so if your schedule has you waking up early, the one thing that I see, brothers and sisters. Is that when you wake up before the world wakes up, it's so quiet. That's the only time it's quiet here in Africa. Once you get past nine o'clock here in the motherland, everybody's up making a whole lot of noise. But when you get up and when I get up at four or five o'clock in the morning, that is so quiet and it's quiet for about four hours. And there was a stretch of time in America where I would wake up at three and I would get all I would get so much done from 3 a.m. to 9 a.m. before the world woke up and I could get up 100 pages. That's it's incredible how much you get done when you commit yourself to getting up before the world does at least wake up two hours before the world does. If you commit yourself to doing that, at least do at least make an attempt to do that. So me, I personally say 5 a.m. is a good time. I think 5 a.m. to rise early in the morning is a good 6 a.m. is pushing it. Seven, you, you really getting there with the world. But getting up at six, uh, a matter of fact, getting up at five 
I know that gives you a good hour because even my father, the late great pastor Eddie Jordan Jr., and I'm going to post one of his sermons also. Uh, my father, I'm going to post out one of his sermons popped up on my in my memories, and I'm going to post one of my father's sermons probably today or tomorrow. Uh, so you all who've never heard my father uh, preach before, uh, I'm going to post one of his sermons on my YouTube channel. But I believe my father used to wake up. I think he used to get up at 430, 430 or 5 because he would leave for work. Yeah, he would be leaving for work at 6. So my father would get up at 4. So at least two hours, two hours to start earlier than when you have to start your day because you can get a lot of reading and studying doing, done in two hours. Amen. Verse number two, to see thy power and thy glory. So as I have seen thee in thy sanctuary, because thy loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus I will bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. That's the whole purpose, family, of why we're doing what we do. The entire purpose, family, of serving the Lord, the entire purpose of doing this fruit fast is so that we can glorify the Lord. And the more God knows and sees in your heart that the reason why you want the blessings is so that you can praise his name, the more he will bless you. Intention of the heart is important when it comes to your healing journey. So many of us, brothers and sisters, the reason why we have not overcome certain spiritual hurdles is because we're not humble enough to overcome. So we have to make sure that we're humble enough to overcome. Because if there's any type of pride in us, if there's anything in us to where if the Lord helps us to take it to the next level, we'll be looking down on others or we'll uh, have an exalted ego, then God won't give us the spiritual breakthrough. So part of having a spiritual breakthrough, Frank family, a breakthrough in your healing is to have a broken and contrite heart. We're doing what we're doing so we can serve the Lord, not so we can show off. And that's very important when it comes to health. Why do you want to be fit? Why do you want to be healthy? Is it to show off the body? Is it because so you can serve the Lord better? Is it to look down on other people? Is that you can serve the Lord better? So we all have to keep that in mind. And David, King David, he's a perfect example of the correct heart to have. A heart that God can protect and defend with is a heart that stays meek, a heart that stays humble. That's why he gave Moses the greatness that he gave him. That's why he said that King David is a man after my own heart. Because King David is saying, my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. King David was a master at deflecting praise back to the Lord. And that's what I told the brother, uh, my brother, my assistant, Kelvin Amachi here uh, in, in the motherland. That's what I told him. I said, brother, I don't care what type of big events we do. I don't care how big it is. I don't care when the time comes when presidents and kings are requesting to book the minister of wellness to hear me speak, there will never be a time where I will not take time out of my day to go visit the orphanages that we support, which my goal is to be, uh, to be many of them. It will never be a time where I will not be willing to speak to the elderly, to speak to the sick, to speak to the poor and the sick and shut in. There'll never be a time where I will not go to the young people, even though they can't give me a dime and not give my time to speak to them and encourage the next generation. We must, we must, the, our goal, brothers and sisters, we must, everything that we're doing, the reason why we need God to bless us, the reason why we want God to protect us is so that we can praise his holy name. And when that is your heart, the blessings start pouring in. 
the blessings will start pointing. That's why the Bible says, I don't care if it's a pandemic. I don't care if smallpox comes and everybody around you is dying. The Bible promises you trust in the Lord and you have that type of commitment to God that Lord protect me so I can praise your name. Oh, that's when Psalms 91 said thousands will be dying around you from the next pandemic, but you will be protected. Hallelujah. When I remember thee upon thy, my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou has been my help. Therefore, in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. God is our help. Uh, God is our help. My soul followeth hard after thee. Thy right hand upholdeth me. He's giving all the praises to God. All the praises. King David was right or die. He wasn't no fickle believer. When trials came, he stood by the Lord. Temptations came. He had his failure, but he repented and they got back on track. King David was a ride or die soldier for the Lord. His attitude was, for God I live, for God I die. No matter what I'm going through, I'm going to stand strong on my commitment to the Lord. I'm going to wait on him so that when he delivers me, all the praise, glory, and honor will go to him and him alone. That's why I don't run to no hospital and run to no doctor whenever I'm feeling bad. Whenever I feel bad, if ever I feel sick, if ever I feel constipated, I get right. I, I say, no, I know what I need to do. I need to get on the Lord's program. I need to get, I need to repent and I need to get on the Lord's program. Ain't no man going to get no glory for healing my body. All the honor goes to the Lord. And then they say, well, minister of wellness, God works through the, uh, the doctor to do what he do. No, he doesn't. Not if that doctor isn't turning, isn't turning you to nature. You can't go against the word of God. Pills, that's sorcery. I heard even Joe Rogan. Even Joe Rogan, I was listening to him. The white devil, Joe Rogan. And even Joe Rogan said on one of his podcasts when he was talking to Cat Williams. Even he said that all pill, he was like, man, why don't people realize that pharmaceutical drugs come from plants? Joe Rogan said that. He was like, why don't people realize that these pills come from plants? Exactly. So that's in God's cause, that sorcery. So we can't go outside of the word of God because we're, we're ignorant and fearful and then try to force God into a system of evil. Stop trying to force God into the current medical system. You can't do that. God has nothing to do with the current healthcare system of the Western world. There's nothing godly about it. It's not righteous. It's sorcery. It's just like these hip hop artists and they try to, they'll do an album with a bunch of disgusting songs. And then they'll put one song in there where it's a gospel song praising the Lord, like Snoop Dogg. He did an album with Kirk Franklin. That's not pleasing to the Lord. No, we have to do things his way. And God says the wisdom of this world is foolishness. God says medicine comes from nature. God says when you take my nature, you take the apple with the with the blood with the blood thinner in it. The blood thinners come from green plants. Green plants have the vitamin K2 that keeps your blood thin. But instead of them telling you to just eat more greens to keep your blood thin and keep your blood from clotting. These devils, for the love of money, they take the green vegetables, they pull the, the blood thinning properties from the green plant God created, then they mix it with a bunch of other chemicals and call it warfarin. And then they sell it to you or they prescribe it to you, say, here, this is what you need to take to, to thin your blood. And then when the devils give you that to thin your blood, then they tell you, well, you can't eat greens because then the greens, the real blood thinner will counteract the synthetic blood thinner that they just gave you. 
That's sorcery. God calls that sorcery. And we're not supposed to be a part of that system. So you can't take what God calls sorcery and then say the Lord directed you to it. No, we have to stop trying to mix the clean with the unclean. That's forbidden in scriptures. We have to keep a strict that of uh, a strict line, a strict division between what is holy and what is unholy, God's way and the world's way, which is the devil's way. We have to keep a clear line. And that's what's so unfortunate when we don't get this food thing right. When we don't the, this abolishment of the perfected ways of eating, which are the fruits, the matunda. When we, by abolishing that, brothers and sisters, it is so sad because, again, even your best holiness churches or even your or even our, our Hebrew Israelite churches, and they are great at, at, at creating that division between everything else except food. And because they can't get the food right, then everything else collapses because then as soon as they get sick, they run to the most satanic evil industry of all. That's why it's so important to eat healthy. And that's what's so sad. So they can create the division. They can create, and again, I know this because I grew up under a holiness pastor. Okay, God says to dress this way. The world says to dress this way. So don't sit there telling me you a holy stripper, that you stripping for Jesus that you got your butt sticking all out of your clothes because you're doing it for G. Don't tell me that. No, if you claim to be a believer, you're supposed to dress this way. The world dresses this way. The world, listen, God has his music. The world has their music. We're not supposed to, uh, you can't make cigarette smoking clean. We're not supposed to be addicted to drugs. See, they get all of that right. But all of a sudden, even the greatest holiness preachers in the world. As soon as you come to the issue of food, all of a sudden it gets confusing. All of a sudden, everybody, we all good about holiness. But all of a sudden, when we start talking about cheeseburgers and hot dogs and ribs and chips, all of a sudden, don't nobody want to apply that, that division when it comes to that. But when you don't do that, when you let your food addiction and when you let your pride not want to accept the fact that God cares very much about what we eat. And that there is a perfected way of eating that has been hidden even in the scriptures that we have. The perfected way being the Genesis 129, when you don't accept that family in the end, the devil is going to get the victory in your life because you're going to get sick. We are. I don't, I don't care how many commandments you keep. I don't care how many tassels you wear. I don't care how many holy days you obey. I don't care how much Hebrew you speak. If you don't get this one right, oh, yeah, you're going to get sick. You will. God's not going to violate his laws of cause and effect for you. I don't care if you can blow the show for good. I'm glad you can blow the show for. I'm glad you follow the moon cycle. I'm glad you have the original, 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 original translation of the Bible. But if you don't get this nutrition right, if you don't master the belly, God, if you don't master the lust of your appetite, you are going to get sick. You are. And when you get sick, you're going to run to the devil. You're going to run to the devil. You're going to run to a pole with two snakes wrapped around. You're going to run to a pole with two snakes wrapped around it. You're going to run, run into a group of atheists. You're going to run into the worst form of evil we have in the world. The greatest murderers is the healthcare system. They're the greatest murderers, the greatest robbers. The greatest destroyers, who has destroyed more black lives and black families than the healthcare system, the Western medicine industry? Who? Who kills more black people than their toxic food, their toxic drugs, their lies that they teach us about nutrition and healing? 
you're going to run into sorcery and witchcraft. And the book of Galatians chapter five says that witches will not inherit the kingdom of God. It's a work of the flesh. Guess what? Guess what that word translated witch is in Galatians five. The word witchcraft which is a work of the flesh in Galatians 5, brothers and sisters, that word witchcraft is, is pharmacy, just like the word sorcery is pharmacy in Revelations 18, 23. And I get so passionate about this because I, I hate saying it, family. I hate saying sincere believers, very sincere, doing a great work for our people, but they can't get past this. And this is a huge issue. This is a huge, this is the biggest stumbling block for believers. I'm not talking to the world. I ain't talking to the world right now. I'm talking to us. I'm talking to those of us who have confessed our sins and have accepted Jesus Christ, Yahshua, as our Lord and Savior. I, that's who I'm talking to. That's who I'm talking to. And then other people of, of faith that are watching this video. I'm talking to people of faith who are walking this walk. We love the Lord. This is a huge stumbling block. It is huge. It's destroying us. It's destroying us. And it's a wall. And many of us feel like we've done so much in our lives, we don't want to try to break through this wall. No, that's not the attitude. We say, I'm sorry, brothers and sisters. You have to break through that wall. You have to. Okay, God is not going to, I don't, I know you can be the nicest, sweetest person in the world. You'll die with Alzheimer's. You'll, you'll, you'll have, you'll go to net the last 15 years of your life, not even knowing who you are. Having a stranger change your underwear because you battling dementia and Alzheimer's. Is that how you want to go out? But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into the lower parts of the earth. They shall fall beside the so by the sword. See, when the Lord protects us, we don't have to worry about our enemies. They shall be a portion for the foxes. God will rise up and destroy our enemies when we commit our whole selves to him. I'm sorry, let me pull it back up. This is Psalm chapter 63. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him. Pay attention, family. We have to pay attention to the words. We have to pay attention. Look at the conclusion of the matter. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. Sweareth by the Lord. Do you swear? by the ways of God in every aspect of your life. Yes, I do minister of wellness. Yeah, but what about, didn't you just get, didn't you just take a, a pill earlier? Did you not just take a pill earlier? It's sorcery. You have to stop. You're participating in witchcraft. And listen, as a medical disclaimer family, listen, let me state this right here. OK, this is the medical disclaimer because some because unfortunately, so many of us are sick and so many of you watching you are you on that with you on that witchcraft. Listen, you're going to have to find a good doctor and you're going to have to have he or she to help you wean off. I am not telling you. OK, and the Lord knows your situation. I'm just giving you the truth from the word of God. But don't sit here and then hurt yourself when because. You've been sitting there popping these pills and then you throw them away and you don't know what you're doing. So I'm not telling you to do that. I'm telling you, you need to work towards doing that. And a part of working towards doing that is that you need to find a real uh, medical doctor that up that will understand and be able to help you wean off. OK, that's all. That's my disclaimer that I have to put out. Because so many of us have done so much damage to our body. These drugs, the reason, one of the reasons why it's called witchcraft is because it rewires the body. You have rewired your body with sorcery and witchcraft. These things have taken a hold on your organs. It has changed your cells. So now your body, now you have to go through a whole withdrawal. 
many of you, you you saying that you're going through withdrawal. No, you're going through withdrawal because you got off them drugs. Or some of you, you're battling side effects from using drugs. All of those drugs are dangerous. They all have side effects. And the pharmaceutical industry only lists the side effects that they want to list. Like, share, like, share, like, and share. Subscribe, hit the notification bell if you're new. We truly welcome you. Psalm chapter 64, hear my voice, O God, in my prayer, preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. Once again, another prayer for the Lord to hear our voice. We want God to hear our voice to preserve our life from fear of the enemy. Again, this is a health message. How can you read this and not think about food? Because we've been blinded by our food addiction. We have been blinded by the God, by the God of our belly, the, the belly God. Hear my voice, O oh God, in my prayer, preserve my life. That means save me, keep me healed, keep me healthy from fear of the enemy. That's any enemy. That's not just a person. That is the enemy of sickness, the enemy of heart attack, the enemy of stroke, the enemy of anxiety, the enemy of depression, the enemy of schizophrenia, the enemy of gout, the enemy of pain, the enemy of persecution, the enemy of cravings, the enemy of addictions. What enemy is overtaking your life today? What enemy are you battling in your life? This is not just talking about a person. The Bible is a spiritual book. We all have an enemy that is trying to overtake us this very day. And we need the Lord to hear our voice and to preserve our lives, to keep us healthy. And the biggest enemy that we face today, the biggest enemy that conquers the lives of believers day after day is the enemy of sickness the enemy of suffering, the enemy of weakness. That's the greatest fear that we have. The fear of suffering, the fear of cancer, the fear of diabetes, the fear of the next pandemic. And we have enemies that are trying to use disease to put the fear of God in us so that we stop being patient and waiting on the Lord and then we go run to them. This is a health message. The Bible is the greatest health book in the world. It is the greatest health book and the greatest nutritional manual in the world. The Bible is very clear about what we should eat to heal the body and what we should not eat and how we should live. And that's why the Bible says, if you obey the words of my instructions, one of the key blessings of God is a long life in excellent health. Not perfect from trials and tribulations, but he'll bring you through every trial and tribulation. So hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. The word of God says in the book of Psalms, chapter 64, verse two, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity. See, hide me from them. They're working in secret right now, trying to figure out which one of these biological weapons we're going to unleash. They're hiding in secret places right now doing simulations for the next pandemic. Trying to come up with their plans for what, how they're going to force us all to roll our sleeve up. There are secret counsels of the wicked right now on how to destroy black people the world over. 
They're meeting right now, brothers and sisters. They're gathered together right now trying to plot our fate. How can we keep them under our feet? How can we keep them from knowing how great they are? How can we keep them from knowing the truth about their history? And so King David is asking the Lord, hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked. Who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words. See, the Bible is a spiritual book. The Bible is a spiritual book. Their tongues are like a sword. Every time these people come on TV, they lie. Their words kill people. Everything they say about health is a lie. Next pandemic come, ain't nothing they going to say is the truth. Nothing they've ever taught us about the history of these viruses is true. Everything they say is a lie. Everything. See? See? They use their tongues like a sword. Every one of them pharmaceutical commercials on TV, killing people. Every one of them junk food commercials on TV, killing people. Every time a politician open their mouth, their tongue is like a sword. Bitter words, selfish words. They don't care about you. They're not trying to heal nobody. They're not trying to keep people safe. They rather watch people die to protect their profits. These people are running a train wreck. That they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. They encourage themselves in an evil matter. See, this is what these people do. The Bible has them pegged out. We don't have to worry, brothers and sisters. The Bible, the Bible is perfectly describing how our enemies are. The Bible is perfectly describing how all oppressors are. So what you fearing them for? God has them figured out. They not, they not one upping the Lord. Ain't nobody got one up on the Lord. Ain't nobody out doing the Lord. We reading a perfect description of how these people are. But all we have to do is stay strong. But this is what they do. They meeting right now, encouraging themselves. They think they have this great master plan to keep our people under their thumb, to keep our people in ignorance and depending on them. They commune of laying snares, see, setting traps for people. They commune about how they're going to keep pumping drugs in the black community and here in Africa. They commune how to bring prostitution and homosexuality in the black community in Africa. They commune together how to keep that junk food in us. So even when we become believers in the Messiah, we still go right back to them when we get sick. See, that's what they do. They hold these secret meetings, all of these different government health organizations meeting in secret, setting traps for the world's population. And they so stupid that they think that God is not present in those meetings. They not so smart. The Bible's describing them right here. They in their meetings now. They meeting right now, thinking nobody can see them when they at the Bohemian Groves, when they doing their child sacrifices, when they doing their sex rituals with little children in the same gender. And these fools are dumb enough to believe that God does not see them. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. This is talking about bribery. This is talking about bribery. I'm reading the word of God, but we have an incredible testimonial here. Look at this on fruits and the sister Romero Williams is 10 days off insulin on fruits. And yet we have people blaspheming the fruits, the matunda of God saying that fruits raise up your diabetes. And here we have this sister's 10 days off insulin, 10 days on fruit fasting and her sugar is dropped to the point where she doesn't have to take insulin. Every single person even those of you, even the leech 
coaches that are watching this video leeching off of this mister in the chat for being 10 days off her insulin. All praise is to the most high. Congratulations, sister. Keep up the great work. So this is talking about bribery in verse six. This is talking about bribery. And the sister said no ketones in her urine. No ketones in her urine. Even if you a leech, you can come out of the, you can come out of hiding and say congratulations to the sister. At least do that. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. This is talking about bribery. See, they bribe each other. You see how they bribe each other. They learn when you join these secret societies, they learn out, they learn about all of your iniquity so they can use it against you. That's why when you try to turn against them, they take you down. Again, I don't know what P. Diddy did to piss them off. I don't know. And I really don't care because I never liked that. I don't like hip hop at all. But it is obvious. It is obvious that P. Diddy did something to piss them off. And you can't do that. When you use Satan and you go through all of them satanic rituals. When you go through all of them rituals to get fame and fortune, I don't know what that man did because we know they all do the same thing. They all do the same thing. But that's why it's important for us to understand who we are because when you understand who we are and you understand the covenant that our people has with the most high, then you understand you can't do what they can do. Look how they treat us worse because God, because that is a part of the curses. That's why it's very important to understand our history. That's why, yes, yeah, salvation through Jesus Christ, but it is imperative for us to understand our history as African Hebrews because we have a covenant with God. And when we break our covenant with God in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28, he says, whatever you do, you'll be cursed. He says, it don't matter if you go, it doesn't matter if you're raised high. God said to our people, if you don't obey my commandments, one of the signs that we are the true biblical Hebrew Israelites is that it doesn't matter how much we achieve. God said, I'll bring you right back down. You will have a different punishment upon you than, the, than, than those who have I have not established my covenant with. So look what happens to our brother. Look what we have. Look at Bill Cosby. Look at Bill Cosby. Look at uh, P. Diddy. Look at Jonathan Majors. Look at what happens to them, brothers and sisters. Compared to the other devils around them. As if, as if these white devils, as if they're not doing the same thing that they're doing. Not excusing their behavior, but the point that I'm making is that our fall is always harder and it always will be harder. That is one of the signs, that is one of the symbols, brothers and sisters, of who we are as a people. <laughs> I called out when the sister from me giving the testimonial, <laughs> from me giving the testimonial of the sister, and I pricked, I brought out one of the demons that watch all my videos by me saying that you leeches and that just tune into my videos because you think you can hide and you don't give, you don't support, but you think you can just hide in secret. And I said, at least come out of hiding and congratulate the sister. And that, and me saying that pricked the heart of one of the demons so bad one of the leeches that they came in the chat and I had to block them. It ain't going to stop them from watching, though. 
Oh, my goodness. You'll never be blessed being a leech. You'll never be blessed. I know you can't stop watching me because I'm the only one that does what I do, but you'll never be blessed with the attitude that you have. So this is talking about bribery, brothers and sisters. This is talking about bribery. And they do the same thing for up to then they'll do the same thing for us. This is why it's very important, especially in this digital age, it's very important that we're careful with how we spend our time. Because everything that we're doing, these satanic people, this is what they love to do, especially the alphabet agenda. As soon as you criticize homosexuality, the first thing they say is, "Who he who has no sin, let them cast the first stone. So a part of the digital environment with them pushing all of this porn and all this filth is so that they can store every little thing that you do in private so that when you try to make a bold stance, they try to come out, they cut, they try to, they'll bring out all of this dirt upon you. They're using iniquities as a weapon. That's what wicked people do. They use your past as a weapon against you. And we've seen cases where, where they have called people out about things that they've done 10, 15, 20 years ago. That's the era we're living in. It used to be a time where you sin, you repent, and you move on. This day and age, You've been past an issue 20 years ago and you got somebody coming out telling, uh, talking about what you did to them 20 years ago. So we have to be very careful, brothers and sisters. But these secret societies, they search out each other's iniquities so they can hold it over each other. And as soon as one of them get out of line, they drop the hammer on them. But God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. All that see them shall flee away. See, so when we hang in there with the Lord. Then God shall shoot at them with an arrow. Suddenly they shall, shall they be wounded. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves, all that see them shall flee away. That's if we hang in there. Just hang in there, family. Yes, we have our enemies conspiring against us. Yes, they're trying to destroy us with food. Yes, they're trying to destroy us with the pesticides. Yes, they have the chemtrails in the air. Yes, they're trying to come against us. Yes, they're trying to take your job from you if you don't roll your sleeve up. But if you hang in there, if you trust in the Lord, if you stay with the Lord and be patient, then the word of God says that God shall shoot at them with an arrow. They shall be wounded in their own tongue, the very tongue that they're using to try to destroy you. Their own tongue shall fall upon themselves. All of them shall flee away. God will rise up on the behalf of those who do not run away in times of distress. God will come to our defense. God will be the friend when we have no friend. See, we love saying all this stuff, but that is conditional family. We love to say these sayings. We love these sayings. But we don't want to earn it. No. When the trial comes, you got to stick with the Lord. When sickness comes, don't you dare run to no sorcery and witchcraft. No. Run to God's nature. And the wicked man says that if you don't do something that God has forbidden you to do, I'll take your job. You must trust in the Lord. You must trust in the Lord. Oh, we got a demon that's angry today. (laughs) 
That's okay. The more you troll me, the more I just, that you just confirm I must be the greatest of all time. So brothers and sisters, it's staying, you have to earn it. You have to earn it, brothers and sisters. You have to earn by staying with the Lord no matter what. And then is when we prove ourselves. When we prove ourselves, brothers and sisters, by making that ride or die commitment that for God I live, for God I die, that's when we can say with boldness that he'll be a friend when we have no friend. He's the doctor when we have no doctor. He's the healer when we need healing. He's the bank for us when we have no money. He's the peace in the midst of a storm. He is the balm in Gilead to heal our wounded soul. The buckler, the strength, the foundation, the great rock, the God of the universe, the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the great redeemer, the king of kings, the Lord of lords. If you want him to protect you and see you through, you have to stick with him no matter what. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider his doing. The righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him. And all the upright in heart shall glory. See, this is the glory. See, the good part comes. The good part comes. We just have to hang in there just a little bit longer. I know it hurts, but you have to hang in there. Embrace the pain. You almost to the glory. Your eyes will all, you, you almost close to seeing the glory of the coming of the Lord. So hang in there. Don't give up yet. You almost made it to the mountaintop. It's a thick fog before you get to the mountaintop. So you might not see it, but you're close to it. Just keep climbing up. There's an old saying that when you have suffered so much for the reward, what you quit now when you so close to getting the reward for your pain. What you close to what you quit now when you so close to being rewarded to your pain, you're close to being rewarded for your pain. So keep fighting. Don't give up now. The glory is almost coming. The joy in, in the morning is almost there. You almost there. You just have a little bit longer to go. You just have a little bit longer to go and then there'll be no more heart disease. You just have a little bit longer to go and the cancer will be away. You just have a little bit longer to go and the financial breakthrough is coming. You have a little bit longer to go and your best days are coming. This is the greatest motivational speech in the world. I'm not no doom and gloom preacher. I just have to preach the truth. But when we get it correct, then yes, I can motivate with the best of all of them. When you trust in God and you ride and die for the Lord, then yes, you have not seen your best days. You haven't wrote your best book, sung your best song, walked your best walk, Talk your best talk. Your best days are yet to come. An abundant life is in your future. If you would only, if you will only commit your whole being, your everything to the ways of the Lord. And that includes, that includes food. That's the last wall family. That's the last battle. 
the last battle. And we have to overcome this battle before it's too late. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and hearing of his holy, precious word. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, brothers and sisters, I'm going to put in the link for a time of fellowship. It's our time for fellowship and our time. If you've been blessed by the message today, if I have motivated you, then brothers and sisters, we have over 100 orphans and millions of children and our brothers and sisters that need to hear the word of the, the word of God from this missionary that you're listening to. Uh, so I now open up the floor for tithes and offerings and acknowledge those who give. Uh, we had a leech that got mad and, and start popping up on the chat. So brothers and sisters, did the word of God bless you today? If it did, and if you're able to, I now open up the floor, uh, brothers and sisters, to, for you to give. And then also, if you would like to click the stream, your link, it is our time of giving and fellowship. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, tuning in. Uh, we're back here. I'm at uh, mom's, mom's children's home here in Nairobi, Kenya. And I'll just get straight to the point, brothers and sisters. If you're tuning in to the Minister of Wellness Ministries video, if I've helped you in your health and you're tuning in to the live streams uh, and you see that I consistently ask for your support and this is where your money is going. This is one of three of the orphanages that we support, one of the children's homes uh, that we support every single month and we need more funds. Uh, because I know that this home is trying to build a school. So we need more funds and more support. And if you're benefiting from me in any way, shape, form, or fashion, and you're uh, listening to this commercial and you see these beautiful children, if you don't have the heart to give, uh, then I'm asking you to unsubscribe and watch somebody else because I'm not a YouTuber. I am a real missionary. I'm a minister uh, doing groundwork for the Lord. Uh, here and your dollar stretches a lot more here than it does in America. So do the right thing, brothers and sisters, and give to the ministry. You see all the ways that you can on the screen is absolutely no excuse. Uh, we waste money on junk food. We waste money on things that we don't need. So how dare you waste money uh, given to the devil, given to our enemies, and then you don't have the heart uh, to give to this healing ministry so we can help continue to feed and support these children so they can grow up and be successful in life. So thank you all in advance uh, for your love and support. And let's continue, brothers and sisters, and I'll continue to give you all an update uh, on, on the progress. Okay? So, um, and then let me ask real quick, because I was here last time. So which one of you, the children, raise your hand if you want to be a doctor. Who wants to be a doctor? Raise your hand. All right. Wow. Look at all those hands going up. So in order to do that, we have to eat to live. And that's why the Minister of Wellness Ministries, and this is just the start, the start with your support. And then we can support children's homes all over uh, the motherland. Okay. So. Thank you, brothers and sisters, and that's all that I have for now. And what do you say? Thank you, Lord. Bless you so much. And what do you say? Thank you, and God bless you so much. Where is the God Club? What's wrong? All right. So those are the ways to give brothers and sisters on the screen. Cash App, Zell, PayPal, be a blessing today, brothers and sisters. Sister Shirley, see y'all sent 25 through Zell. Thank you. God bless you, sister. Sister Sandra White sent the Zell offering. God bless you. Brother Daniel White sent a, a Zell offering. God bless you, my brother. Uh, Sister Tina sent the $50 cash app, said, for where, for wherever it's needed. Thank you, sister. I appreciate you. Uh, Brother King Will Pearson, thank you 
for your cash app offering brother eric sent cash app offering for the babies yes sir uh, our expenses for the babies we want to gather up as much as we can a thousand to two thousand every month so we can send to our three orphanages that we support brother eric duncan thank you for your cash app offering uh l Durrell, uh thank you 54 dollar cash app sister shirley y'all allen send 50 dollars for support mission for the motherland blessings thank you mama allen god bless you sister lornette son for cash app offering and then uh brother brian and sister samantha uh gave earlier in the broadcast so thank you brothers and sisters for not uh ignoring the call to give i appreciate it and um and i thank you yes i sent this i uh, saw it sister tina thank you very much and i'm very proud of you once again uh for your testimonial of healing uh from insulin uh absolutely incredible testimonial and i'm honored that uh the lord has blessed me and thank you all family for not being leeches i ignore people uh who want to uh but i remember one brother because everybody knows that it's wrong to leech off a of ministry and i'll never forget one brother and at first he was whining like a two-year-old uh saying that uh minister you're going hard in on on not giving and then he sent the dollar uh to be sarcastic but then he came back and sent 100 dollars because he knew it was wrong okay i'm not gonna die uh, I may die, family. I may die a broke, stressed out black revolutionary because I'm going to never sell out and I'll never stop doing what I do for you. OK, I will love you until the very end. I will fight for you and I will preach to you with all of my heart, soul and strength. And so I've may very well suffer the fate of the black revolutionary that doesn't sell out and die broke and stressed out. But I'll go down fighting. And, I, and you will know if you leech that you were a part of the reason why I died um, stressed out and broke. So don't be a part of that stereotype and do the right thing. But I'm going to hold you because I'm going to hold anybody responsible because I know it's the right thing to do. So let's not act like it isn't the right thing to do, brothers and sisters. Uh, and I appreciate you for all of your love and support. And I did find... I did find a, um, a company here to juice for me. If you have, again, any questions, comments, or concerns, family, before I, I'll put the stream your link in one more time, I'm going to show you all the juice. I did find a company here to make it. I'm drinking. This is water, but I actually found a company to make me some, um, to make me some, uh, some juice. So let me, I want to show you all that. Put in any uh, prayer requests you have. You can put that in. Also. What, is, what is the house? It's made of mud. The house is made of clay, uh, mud, sand. Uh, we, 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 we put them together with uh, uh, small water. Then we construct a, uh, a house like this. But the, the only disadvantage that you have with this uh, kind of house, when it rains heavily, uh, yeah. the house cannot sustain the rain uh neither the winds because as you see the rooftop uh it is covered with uh with some of the linings and some of uh, iron sheets that are second hand uh so it's our prayer for your support so that we can make a good house for them a good shelter for them here we have uh and tell them and how much would a good house cost a good basic house cost yeah uh earlier on we had uh we had uh done a budget with uh with uh, some of the foreman, and it costed at uh, two hundred and fifty thousand to construct uh, uh, a, a semi, yeah. a semi permanent house. And so, brothers and sisters, two hundred fifty thousand shillings. You know, that's only about one to two thousand U.S. dollars. Okay. Yes, Madeline Shores. I received your offering uh, through the website, and then Sister Elise Harrison uh, just sent fifty dollars. Uh, through Zell. So yes, I did uh, receive it. We are still trying to get that home built for them, uh, brothers and sisters. We're still trying to raise the funds for the home. Uh, love and uh, huraha means laughter. So there are two children here. They have not stepped their feet into any institution. 
We have their little brother here, their, their, the second born. We have their elder brother over there. And uh, we have their mother with their uncle. And um, we, they have their elder sister who have just finished the primary education. Uh, the same, they are, yeah, she has not gone to a secondary school. And uh, you can tell is the bathroom that they're using to shower every day when they wake up early in the morning. Show and the uh, you can see they, are, they don't have a toilet. Mm -hmm. So that, that is a, that is the same place that you see uh, they having bathroom and toilet at the same time. But uh, we uh, we pray to God uh, when we will construct their house, we'll construct a semi permanent house mm -hmm. which will contain a toilet inside right. and a bathroom inside. And that's only two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah, that is two hundred fifty thousand. Yeah. Yeah. And. Um, from, apart from that, we will look for a budget of taking these uh, kids uh, to school. We know how to give the cash app, the Zelle, uh, the ministry. I'll put it right towards here. You all know that I do what I say I'm going to do with your money, right? You all know that about me by now. Stop watching my videos if you're leeching off of me. If you don't have a heart to give, stop watching my videos. Unsubscribe and watch somebody else. I don't care. I'd rather have 20 loyal supporters um, than to have a bunch of leeches, a bunch of selfish leeches uh, soaking up my gift that's helping you in your life and you don't have no care in the world for what our people are going through. And stop comparing America to Africa. There's no comparison. Thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Sister Cheryl Pageant. Uh, thank you for your uh, generous, your generous cash app offering, Sister Cheryl. I really appreciate it. I hope all is well with you. Thank you so much, family, for showing up um, and showing out tonight. Today uh, It's almost evening time for me. So I appreciate it, brothers and sisters, um, for that. I appreciate for those of you who also uh, purchased from the online store, the missionary work, Sister Keila Lee, $10 to build the house. Okay, thank you, sister, I received it. Um, so brothers and sisters, um, I appreciate it and you all continue to keep me in prayer. I did find a company here that's not too far from me. This is beets, carrots, lemon, and something else. It's called the heartbeat. This is called the heartbeat. So this is a red juice. Uh, that I have uh, that I'll be doing, uh, but this is freshly squeezed. It's called the heartbeat, fresh, freshly squeezed. Yes, I received this, Sister Cheryl. Thank you very much for your very generous cash app offering. Thank you, much needed. Thank you and God bless you and your family. Sister Nina, I received your prayer request. So let's stay strong, family. So this is mine and um, and so we still stand strong and finishing strong, but this is called the heartbeat. Uh, so I'm taking the red juice, you know, so I can help with my cardiovascular system. Okay. And no, I don't check my numbers. I don't care. Um, I don't check stuff because I already know what I need to do. And what I need to do is what God has told us to do. And that's to eat his medicine food. So there's no other way. If I ever have any questions, or concerns about anything that's going on with me, then I know what to do. I, just, I know what to do. But I'm not telling you not to do that. You, have, I'm not telling you not to do that. I'm just talking about me. Okay, so I know that some of us are made of a different cloth because I, I don't care if I had, I don't care if, if, if I had a, a tumor sticking out of the side of my head, I'm still not going to no doctor. You still couldn't, you still couldn't make me go to no doctor. I'll just grape fast. I'll eat grapes and fast. I'm telling you. Okay. Let's pray, brothers and sisters. Let's say a word of prayer. I'm glad. I hope you all enjoyed the word today. So let's say a word of prayer. Um. Oh, green powders. Um, the food, Discharge Ministries, Inc., the food, the whole food is always better. But, you know, it's nothing wrong. We have I actually sell a superfood powder, so it's nothing wrong with them as long as they don't have any added artificial ingredients. But it's still a supplement to the whole food source. OK. 
Okay, let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this time. I praise and thank your holy name for you and you alone are worthy to be praised. And Heavenly Father, I thank you for the word, the word that went forth today, the word of conviction, the word of truth, the word of knowledge, the word of healing. And so I pray upon every one of the sound of my voice that you would give us the strength and the discipline to endure until the end. I pray for Sister Nina Taylor and others who are really struggling with persecution, Heavenly Father. They are undergoing, undergoing a great test of their faith as they are literally the only ones in their families trying to eat to live. So Heavenly Father, I pray for their strength. I pray for her strength. I rebuke all satanic and demonic forces and people in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach trying to come against us, trying to get us off the righteous path, trying to trip us up, Heavenly Father. Help us, Lord. Keep us, Lord. Strengthen us, Lord. Be with us, Lord. Push us to the end. Give us the wings of an eagle. Give us the courage of an eagle to fly through the eye of the storm, Heavenly Father. Be our peace in the midst of a storm. Be our way maker, Heavenly Father. We need you to destroy our enemies, Heavenly Father. We need you to destroy these sorcerers, these witches. We need you to destroy them, Heavenly Father, so that we can praise your glory and marvelous name. I, play, I pray for peace, blessings, prosperity, and safety upon everyone in the sound of my voice. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach, I humbly pray this prayer. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. And amen. I love you all, brothers and sisters. It is my honor to serve you as your minister of wellness. I will not sell you out. I will not quit. I will preach this truth until the end, uh, but I thank you for making it as less stressful of, upon me as possible in those moments when Satan is trying to get me to quit. It really helps to have your success stories, your financial support, your participation uh, in times when I'm feeling down and out and overwhelmed. Those type of things can help keep me going, brothers and sisters. So thank you all, and I will keep you all in prayer, and you keep me in prayer 13 days down, 17 days to go. Once and for all this month, we're going to finish it off. Once and for all this month, let's get it done so that we can, so our health can finally soar in 2024. Shalom.